you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. Yes, it is Unsealed, the official podcast of Wings of the Eagle. I am Christopher Manti, your host and your friend. And I'd like to hear from you if you're watching or listening right now. Even if it's not right now, if it's in the future, you can tell me you're there too. Just go ahead and leave a comment and say hi. Hey, there's our sister bond servant checking in. What's up? Um, if you're new, let me know where you're from, where you're watching from. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns, and whatever else, um, perfectly welcome. Just go ahead and type it into wherever you're watching, whether that be YouTube or Facebook or X or Instagram. Uh, or even the End Time Church app. Yes, endtime.app will get you to your app store directly and uh, give you access to the free Christian application that we have invented for you, for the church, by the church. What? Get out of town. Vitor, what is happening, brother? Blessings to you, man. Long time. Awesome. Wow, praise the Lord. Yeah, Vitor is a brother in Portugal. Well, he's from Portugal. I assume he's still living there. Uh, let me know. Um, if you are, that's awesome. <clears throat> Fantastic to see you, man. Fantastic. Um, thank you for saying so. Anyway, guys, real quick before we get going, as always, please share this video. Please just hit the share button on whatever you're watching it on, and uh, that would be a huge help. Um It'll just get more people involved and uh, more eyeballs on it, right? And that's the that's what we're all about here. And obviously, we're about the gospel. Uh, as Christians, that's what we do. Um, Wings of the Eagle is um, kind of uh, we're refocusing a little bit more sharply in this uh, new year, new now for four months. Uh, uh, we're refocusing on basically the areas of we're always going to want to connect with the church with the world. We're always going to want to uh, be with Israel and preach the gospel to Jews and Muslims. Um, but specifically now we're going to drill down on um, eschatology, which is nothing new. That just means proper end times understanding from the scriptures, not from our own minds. Um, Israel, again, not a ch just change at all. Want to support and staying with them every way we can, um, and just teach properly again about them and about God's plan with them and the unseen realm, um, because those three elements, uh, I agree, and Pastor Jake McCandless and others who have spoken to in the past few months agree uh, that these are the three main deficiencies or um, things that the church is unaware of, unprepared for, untaught on, uneducated in, and uh, we need to do that ASAP, right? Okay, so the, under that last heading of the unseen realm is, uh, obviously, things we can't see on our normal fleshly day-to-day -day life. Um, <clears throat> that means there's, you should know, if you're a Christian, you should readily accept and understand that there is a uh, a realm, a world, a part of this world, however you want to look at it, um, that is very real, but is unseen. You cannot see with your fleshly eyeballs, but there it is. Many, many examples in the scripture, obviously. And so we can't run from that, even if it confuses us. And uh, <clears throat> because at some point here, it's going to break through and... Um, we need to be ready to at least discuss it because we're not. And that's why I want to bring this topic up for you guys today, which is, I believe it is time. I've been in prayer for a while about it and, and built some infrastructure a little. Um, 
to facilitate discussion among all denominations of Christians. All. It's time for a Christian council on UAPs or UFOs. Um, a council in a, I'm thinking of a very old school literal sense of like a giant table. Council of Nicaea. Right? Something like that. Uh, where representatives or whatever from all the major Christian denominations would get together and like the Lord told Isaiah, uh, come let us reason together. Let's reason this out. Let's talk about this. Um, <clears throat> because God is speaking on this. And um, we're, we're, it's really the, the, the Christian world, the, the evangelical quote-unquote Christian world that loves the Bible and loves hanging out with each other, but really doesn't interact with any other parts of the world, um, it's a, like a whole separate universe from, let's say, the UFO world. And obviously, a different religious beliefs, we can, we can process that. Well, you're a Muslim, you're a, you're a Hindu, I'm a Christian. Okay, so we'll see what we can, maybe we can facilitate conversation. But this is not that. Um, the, the, the leading of the Lord on this is we are not prepared. None of us are, we're not ready uh, for what's coming as far as the unseen realm. And that doesn't necessarily mean demons, evil fallen angels only. It could mean that. I mean, they're there. Um, but so are other things, uh, possibly God's angels, and uh, different aspects of the creation um, that we have not seen yet. And it's possible we're going to be seeing these things. And maybe they're, you can call them entities or forms of life. Or maybe they're just types of transportation or technology or whatever. <clears throat> Uh, so as we, and we've, this is not new. It's not, I'm not prophesying about it. It's happening now. It's been happening for years. Um, it's coming more to the forefront now and it's becoming um, in more in our face. And at a certain point, it's just going to blow up. Okay. I mean, the subject is just going to blow up in the church's face and who's going to be ready for it. Okay. So that's the, that's the thought. Um, behind this council. Ideally, again, now not to not to um downgrade, you know, denigrate anybody, you're an individual Christian, we want obviously we want to talk to you too. You can look at the bottom of the screen right now if you're watching. Have you ever had a a experience or a UFO or any unexplainable, you know, thing you would fall into the supernatural or unseen realm? Go to unsealedpodcast.com. And there's a form at the bottom. You can tell me about your experience. I'm not going to make fun of you. I'm not going to blab to the world. Uh, but you can tell a pastor about it, and you can feel secure, okay? Anyway, a lot of folks just need that, just, uh, just that first step. Um, yes, there's ideas. Sure, we want to have regular Zoom meetings or, or something like that just with regular folks. But I, I feel like, I mean, at some point, yes, the, the Church A or the Catholic Church may have a position on this officially or whatever, but at a certain point, we, the Church, we're, we're going to have to put aside our, um, you know, our hats about, oh, well, my, my denomination says this or mine says that, and say, forget all of that stuff. I'm, I'm accountable to the Lord myself. For me and my family, right, we... And something's happening where my church is not prepared. We have not talked about this. Okay, let's say, for an example, um, you know, something happens where, um, I don't know, it turns out that there is some kind of evil intent or it's an evil angel or whatever demonic thing <clears throat> in this UFO phenomenon. It comes out and there's it's just evil. Somehow it's evil. And we all know it's evil. Okay, what are we doing about that? 
for example, a lot of people like what what would we do? What would the church do? We need a council uh, to talk these things out as the body. That's just, I don't know what else we can do. There are there's the reflexive, really stupid idea that's apparently happening from what I can tell in the government of my country of the United States, there are conservative Christians in the Congress and in the Pentagon and in the armed forces um, that believe, maybe they know more than I do, maybe they don't, but they believe that this UFO UAP phenomenon is demonic. And that's a quote. I would definitely take anyone to task in the world who says it's demonic because I know for a fact it's not demonic because demons don't do that. We know what demons are. Anyways, point being, they think it's evil, okay? It's, it's demonic. So we, by talking about it, by disclosing, we want disclosure. I want disclosure. Uh, full, full on, right? Just like complete, uh, it's a moral thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a Christian thing. You can't have it both ways. You want the truth or you don't. And um, the Christian should never be afraid of the truth, ever. Because Jesus is the truth. Um, so uh, they say it's, it's demonic or evil, and therefore they don't want to bring it out to the public. That's the solution? To keep it a secret? How is you keeping it a secret going to prevent evil from doing its thing? I mean, that's that's really not. That makes no sense at all. That makes no sense logically or spiritually, and it's not biblical. That's for sure. Don't hide behind Christianity if you think that you not talking about evil spirits are going to make or whatever evil angels, or whatever you think you you not talking about them is going to make them go away. The name of Jesus is our power. Doesn't matter what they try to do. Do you, do you have faith or not, right? That's what I would ask. Do we have faith or not? Why are you afraid of anything? My, my hunch is, my hunch is that these, however many there are, and there, hopefully there aren't that that many, but there might be, um, those who do, are not talking about it and not don't want disclosure in the, Again, this is just the United States size. I don't know about any other governments, but apparently it's true in the UK as well. Um, but there are conservative Christians who don't want to talk about it um, but, but maybe they don't know nothing. Maybe they're just being lied to. Maybe they don't know anything more than we do. They just heard this or that or they've seen a video and oh, that doesn't look right. <coughs> uh even classified stuff, right? Oops, I've seen that. There's a creature, or there's a, or there there's a flying thing in the air that must be evil. Uh, what? Have you talked to the thing? Like, have you, like, have you seen evil come from the craft? Like, what are, what are we talking about? Like, I think it's more like they've been conditioned to say that. Like, they've been convinced by a non-believer, by a non-Christian, most likely, to take that position. Because, look. We're talking about the national security state, at least again here. We're talking about counterintelligence officials. Okay, these guys and gals are literally paid to lie and to find out what works best in someone's psyche to get them to agree to what the government wants. That's their job. To find out what works with some another human to get them to go along with what they want. So if they don't want the UAP UFO thing to come out, if they don't want disclosure, then they will tell a Christian person whatever they must, true or not, doesn't have to be true at all, but they will tell them what they need to tell them to convince them to not disclose it. And if that means telling them it's evil, then that's what they're going to tell them. Right? Think about it. For these folks, and I'm not trying to say they're not, they're all non Christians who are 
in the know. I'm not, I don't I have no idea. And by the way, uh, hello, I've got some awesome feedback here. I'll get to you in just one second. Um, the folks who are in the security agencies, who are in the intelligence community, in the intelligence community, you know how many, just in America, there are, what was the number? Mm, I think 18, 14, or something like that. Um, nearly 20 different intelligence agencies. CIA, DIA, I'm, I'm not going to, there's so many. On a, NSA, on and on and on and on and on. Um, and if they, that's their job, to keep things secret is their thing. Protect national security. Sorry for the air quotes, but that's what they say all the time. National security will harm national security. Sources and methods will expose sources and methods, right? The words that mean nothing. Uh, to present prevent things from coming out. Um, so anyways, yes, they will lie. They do it all the time. That's their kind of their job. Um, so anyway, don't what, what I'm saying is we will be very what wise as Christians to discuss this among ourselves in a council format with leaders. Yes, representative from the Catholic Church. Yes, representative from the Orthodox, from the Lutherans, from the this and the that, all the big denominations and the non-denominationals, the independent Baptists. I don't know, like, just get around a table and say, okay, what what's really going on here? Let's not be afraid to tell the truth, to uh, say God is still in control. Say that Jesus still rose from the dead, and yet there's this other thing here that we've never really thought about, and now we have to deal with it because um, we're going to lose people to apostasy left and right. They're going to leave the faith. They're going to leave the faith because their church never taught about, never taught on it, never thought about it, made fun of people who talked about seeing a UFO or whatever, and they're out. They are gone. They're done. Now their soul's in trouble. And maybe now your soul as their pastor or their shepherd is in trouble because you were negligent and you didn't care to be uh, teachable on this or to realize that you had pride or that you weren't listening to the Holy Spirit. I don't know. Just saying all these things are swirling around. So that's why we need a council. Uh, hey, bless the Lord. Mo cool. Hey, man. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mo cool. Yeah, become a YouTube member. It's an e super easy way to support a Wings of the Eagle. Um, okay, so let's get to comments here. I'll shut up. Glasses on. Nope. Uh, Bond Server says, I don't think we will ever totally be totally ready but we can be as informed as possible. I agree. I agree. Um, but I'm talking about even after things happen. So it's not even like we have a prophecy of this. or that. Okay, we know this is coming. We know the Great Tribulation is coming. We know right, Jacob's trouble. We know the abomination of desolation. We know certain things are coming, but it's still in the future. So we can kind of sort of at least be studying that, be preparing, talking about that. But these are things like even after they happen, let's say something happens tomorrow, you know, some big UAP revelation, um, and to talk about it after it happens because we still got some a long time to go before the Lord comes back, potentially, right? Um, so even after it's coming, as it's coming out. So prepare. I understand the initial preparation maybe is not going to be there, but as we go, we're going to need to get together. I really, I am utterly convinced Marisol, what is up with you, my sister? On uh, Facebook, she says, perhaps demonic as in evil. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what they mean. You're talking about like the folks who say that UFOs are demonic. as in, Like they're, it's the same word. Like they're just substituting the word. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, most times that's exactly what it is. Yep. Yep. Um. Bottom servant, they won't divulge the truth might be a power control thing. No doubt. I mean, that's absolutely 1,000% part of it, if not all of it. Yep. 
And remember, in this particular topic, again, just being an American on this, and I am an American. I'm, I consider myself patriotic. I, I kind of like it here. I mean, I love what the Lord has blessed us with, and the the power and influence and money and and all that stuff is. Why wouldn't you be? You know, I'm a fan. Okay, but <clears throat> they've been. Uh, uh, there has been a um, provable fact of a cover-up um, to keep the truth out from the public since at least the mid-40s. That is a fact. It is documented. I don't know. We don't want to hear it or whatever, but it's a fact. So if that's not power or control, I don't know what it is. No, multi generational now, multi administrations. Doesn't matter who the president is, but doesn't matter what party is in control. Doesn't matter, you know, big companies come and go, they rise and fall. There's, it's an unelected because they think we can't handle it, they need to be in control. This small group over these SAPs, the special access projects, and all these rules and regulations and deniabilities and all this stuff. Anyway, it's a fact. And power and control, that's that's a big part of it. Vitor, God's in control. That's right. No need to fear the truth. That's right. Hiding behind closed doors is just nonsense. Agreed. Yes, 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 yes. Yep, it is nonsense. Why would we be afraid of anything? This is what kills me about this whole idea that we're not going to we're not going to let it come out because it's there. It's demonic and it's bad to talk about it. I mean, that's literally what the idea is. We should never let it get out because what, because what you're not, I'm sorry, but are you even a Christian? You're afraid of the devil. What's the matter with you? And not even the devil, but right. Some underlings apparently. Come on. It, and again, I'm not saying that this is a fact. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's just let's just say that it is, right? I'm just saying, what if even if it is that the worst case scenario is it's uh evil and demonic, and there's uh ministries that I used to you know be a part of are saying making videos about how it's all de demonic. I mean, that's just stupid. It's too early to say that at all. But so what? Like, what difference does that make? We're still going to have to deal with it. How are we going to deal with it? You can't cast away a UFO, a cat, you know, like a demon. Can you? <laughs> I've never seen that. Um, it doesn't help that many alien contact stories are horrible and seem demonic. Um, that's true. There is definitely an element to that. Um, but they're not all horrible. But just being honest. Sometimes it's, again, depends what you're reading. Okay. And this is all just eyewitnesses, right? Witness accounts. This happened to me. Assuming they're telling the truth. I kind of like to assume that I believe people who experience things, even if they may not be totally correct in what they experience. They, I, something happened. I, I do believe that as you know by default, um, that something happened. And yeah, a lot of the times it's horrible and seems demonic, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes they're just they feel great and they're taken someplace beautiful and they're told some beautiful stuff and then they're returned. What's that? Could that still be evil? Yeah, it could. Could it be good? Could it be God doing that? It could. Or maybe there's a neutral aspect to it that we don't like to think about. Neutral. Not God and not the devil. You know, not demonic and not God's side. Another part of creation or nature that we don't, we haven't contacted really yet or don't know about or how to access it. I don't know. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking of, have you seen the movie? Um, contact, have you, uh, contact, communion, 
right? Very famous book and movie. Um, Whitley Strieber, <clears throat> uh, who has a very terrible experience. Okay, uh, more than one, by the way. But <clears throat> um, the initial one where, yes, he was you know forcibly, again, according to him, he was forcibly taken and he saw these things and they experimented or they raped him, basically. Um, it's terrible. And they didn't seem to have any feelings about it. You know, no remorse or whatever. And he's like, this sucks. Um, but they continue to make contact, apparently, again, according to him, even to this day. And he is not afraid. Like, he knows something is happening and he's not going to classify them. as he, he just doesn't know. He, he is of the mind that there's more to this than we're even thinking. Like, it has to do with life and death. The afterlife he's talking about. I mean, it's it gets really wild. Um. Anyway, yes, I agree with you, Bond Servant. That's that's part of the reason why. Um. My the council idea is to make a corporate church statement to settle folks. Um. I don't. I don't think so. I don't know that. Nope. It's at this point. It's literally just a meeting, a, a ongoing. Maybe there's a statement at some point, or maybe there's an ongoing series of statements as Christians generally. As Christians, we believe, you know, we should do this. This is what Christians should be doing or acting like or or whatever, accepting, rejecting. I don't know. Maybe all that. I'm not there yet, though. I'm not at that point at all. Right now, I'm just as, you know, as common for me throughout my life or my adult life is um, making a place available or facilitating communication, facilitating conversations to make the, set the table, right? To, to, for them to come, for all of us to come together. That's all it is right now. Marisol says, I thought the same thing. Um, a possible a creation we know nothing about. It is possible. Mm -hmm. It is. Like, again, we read, I'm teaching through Ezekiel at End Time Church on Monday nights. You all are invited to get, be there 8 p.m. Mondays or afterwards. It's all on YouTube and on the Roku channel and, and our app and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, part of that is, I just finished chapter one. And there's a lot of non-human creations that God has made that are really crazy and wacky and frankly scary. If you saw one of the cherub, one of these creatures that was under the throne of God or whatever that image is in Ezekiel 1, and these wheels within wheels and eyeballs covering everything and wings and all that, if you saw that, would you be at peace, right? Would you be, oh, hallelujah, or would you be screaming your head off thinking it's evil think about it on sermon personally i've seen a couple couple angels and wasn't afraid did i know about this we might have to talk offline there bond servant um i'm also inclined to believe it's more of a dimensional rift considering ezekiel's vision for example well right it might be in other words, if it, uh, well, but what does that mean? I mean, I'm with you, but I don't know what that means, really. I mean, I, I believe that it's very possible that we, there are other dimensions around us, and our, uh, you know, if you believe the thinking of the theories about this, they're they're actually curled in a smaller space, and you know, quantum areas and all this stuff. Like, are there things in there, or whether they be life forms or or something else? Can can living things pass? Can they access these other dimensions and, and travel through them? What does that mean? Okay, does that mean you live in the other dimensions? Or does that mean you're just using them to travel from one place to another? Those are different questions. Or I mean different realities, different facts, All right. Anyways, so I would love to get to the bottom of it. Uh, Vitor, the truth sets one free. That's right. Neglecting to disclose the truth equates to keeping people in mind shackles. That's correct. Yes, brother. Mm-hmm. And what's the greatest, what does Paul say? The fear of the 
fear of death. I mean, God takes away the fear, that fear. I mean, what, well, literally, what are you afraid of? What are we afraid of? Of dying? Being tortured? We've got that from mankind. I mean, we we do that to ourselves, no problem. It's been happening since Eden, right? The UFOs are not going to increase that, are they? Or Or present some new kind of danger? Other than tricking people maybe deceiving and be, the church now becomes lost and stuff like that that's a problem but as far as what they can do there's nothing what, what can you do yes be set free i agree having said that <clears throat> uh for the podcast audio audience vitor says having said that one could make the argument that coming out with the truth could be more than what people can handle in their minds, in their minds, so they control the narrative. Uh, that, again, yes, is probably what's happening, or that was the original thought. Uh, the documents pretty much confirm that, you know, the, the documents that have come out and have been proven, um, that that was the thought, and it might still be the thought. Originally, in the 40s and 50s, we got to keep this under wraps. The people will freak out. Um, I forget the exact phrases that were used, but something like societal collapse. It's so, it's so, it would blow everyone's mind to such a degree to find out what these things are that we're finding and that we're hiding that society itself would collapse. That's at least what some of them are afraid of. And still to this day, some of them do still. Yep. Yep, man. It's, that's what this is for. That's what a council would be doing, right? Just throwing it out there. Uh, Moku, my brother says, yep. Gee, and we talked about this more than once, I'm pretty sure. Jesus travels via clouds from heavens to the earth. He does. Uh, he does. Um, right? I think we did the scripture on this. Um, was it last Monday night? Not this week, but the week before. I think I covered some of them. Um, yeah. Uh, he does. And, and, if, and, if, and if he does, wouldn't a lower creature, you know, one of his creation, wouldn't they at least have to do that? if not more like when they need that system, if, you know what I mean? If not even uh, something more intricate, I don't know. Um, is there a Q and a tomorrow at 4 PM? That's the plan, sir. Yes. Yes. I'll be probably right here. I don't know. Yep. That's the plan. Um, Carrie, what is happening? This is my sister uh, locally. I totally agree. Thank you. And I'm here finally. Well, you, you are good to go. Don't worry. You can always rewind too. Um, I love it. I'm not sure what you're agreeing with, but I love it. I'll take it. Um, bon Servant says the orbs have tripped me up mm. going through things, etc. That makes me seriously consider the supernatural something. It's Nephilim and all that stuff. Okay. So if you don't know what she's talking about, there are orbs, meaning they're circles and they look metallic, but sometimes they don't look metallic. Sometimes they look like light balls. Um, or maybe they're metal ish with light on top of them or coming from inside. Who knows? Um, but yes, there have, I mean, this is not a theory. There's video of these types of things. Um, orbs are traveling together in formation. They make triangles. They look like they're chasing stuff. There's some videos of orbs tra tracking down other types of UFOs. Like the tic tac shaped, or the you know what I mean, the saucer, the cigars, guys, and then the orbs show up like they're not on the same team. It appears at times. Um, 
there's that. Uh, and then, yes, there's, again, you can see if you go look, uh, orbs will, and there's a lot of reporting on it and witnesses and things for years that these types of things happen. But I've just, you can see it on that Skinwalker Ranch show. An orb goes into a mountainside and then comes out like it's not even there. Like it comes in at the top, you know, at a distance. It goes down into the mountain, into the, a mesa, basically, right? And then it comes as, as if it never altered course at all. It comes right out through the front. So why would that mean Nephilim? I don't know. I don't know why that would mean evil at all. All that would mean is, <clears throat> to me, um, whatever that is, whether that's a drone of some kind, like somebody's piloting it, or whether something is inside it, or maybe it has an intelligence in of its own, I don't know, um, but that it can manipulate like the lore did, walking through walls. So there's that. that is a good... Uh, that's a good argument for dimensionality interdimensional manipulation or quantum travel or something like you're going in between atoms or or i don't know but this is not right you're seeing things like that you see them literally there one second and then gone the next not fly away gone just poof gone 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 what's that okay that that doesn't say good or evil to me it's very neutral. It's it's something though. Okay. Anyway. Oh, another thought is that bond servant says another thought is that when the pit is opened in Revelation, Revelation nine, uh, fifth trumpet, right, and other stuff mm, seems more like Ezekiel stuff that you can't explain in natural terms. Yeah, I mean that's we know that's part of the story. Right, we're talking about you know the trump, the seven trumpets, and the fifth trumpet, and this abyss being opened up, and things flying out of it, and um, they're harmful and they're demonic, yes, and they're led by a demon or a, or a fallen angel or something, uh, king of the bottomless pit. Yeah, that's demonic. Okay, we know, yes, for sure, but we also know that we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're not at the fifth trumpet. So. Just because we see things that maybe kind of sort of look in that realm, is that does that necessarily automatically mean they're evil? It might. Don't get me wrong, guys. I don't have, I really don't have an opinion on it. I'm just trying to get you not to have an opinion on it either. As far as making a moral judgment that they're good or evil, we all I'm saying is. From what I can tell, we don't know diddly about that yet. Maybe there's more than one group. Maybe the good and the bad are accessing these things. Maybe there's a third party, like I said before. Maybe there's neutral. Maybe it's actual another species from another world. It's still possible. I'm not sure if that's the my preferred explanation. Like I don't think that's the best evidence right now, but I mean, it could. Uh, Psalm 68.5 in uh, Complete Jewish Bible. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, extol him who rides on the clouds. His name, Yah, be glad in his presence. Right, the, the cloud rider, that's what he's called. That's what he always um, has been known as, right? Way back to the Exodus and all that stuff. Yeah, so Jesus and God himself, well, that's Jesus, um, he definitely participates in that kind of travel. Um, cool idea to envision. Yeah. Yep. Bond servant says, well, my guardian angel's name is George. I think I'll have to ask him if he can divulge. Hey, you know what? If you have that kind of relationship, if you really do have that, Ask, I say, ask away. Why not? Um, anyways, guys. Okay, so that's the that's the thought. That's the process. Um, I want to continue to hear uh, from you. 
And uh, I believe I got a fly here because I got a knock on my door. So anyway, guys, till next time. Uh, love you so much. This is Faster Manti. Please get in touch with me. Go to unsealedpodcast.com and let's get to work on this Council of Christians on the UAP issue. Bye-bye.